I am the mummy. I am the mummy. And on today, on today's show, on today's show, we are going to discuss Universal Studios Dark Universe. The Mummy review filled with spoilers. So if you haven't seen Tom Cruise's and Universal's latest Mummy movie, we suggest you 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 close your browser and revisit it later when we post it on either our YouTube channel forward slash Corker Comics or Facebook page. Correct. I'm Stephen Corka. Is anyone hiring? <laughs> this is what's that your name, fucker? My name is Juan Corka. No, his name is Juan Farach. Juan Farach and Stephen Corka. We're here to talk about the mummy. We're here to talk about Universal's Dark Universe. We're here to talk about a bunch of other things. I think before we do anything though, we need to talk about something that is sad to my heart, but it's part of life, and that is Adam West. Adam West left us, what was it, on Sunday or Saturday? Saturday night. One of those, uh, he was 88 years old. If you don't know Adam West, he is probably most famous for playing Batman on the 1966 TV series. And his second famous thing is probably Family Guy as Mayor West in, is it Quahog? Yes. Quahog. Was he in the Towering Inferno too? That is really, really random that you know this. I, I, I know it is, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Either way, a Adam West... Adam West left us. This it actually, you know what? No lie. Let me tell a true story here. When I was a kid, I went to the Miami Auto Auto Convention, and Adam West was there with the old 1960s Batmobile. I got his autograph. I got a photo with him as a little kid, and uh, and this was in 1988, I think, or 89, right after Batman came out. And I told him I was eight, nine years old. You just, you just know my age all of a sudden. Anyways, uh. That uh, that he was the best Batman and he was better than Michael Keaton. I told Adam West that. Well, I I've never lied to Adam West, um, <laughs> but it is sad that he passed. Uh, the, oh, he was he was in Powerless also. He was the narrator. He was uh, he was in Batman: Return of the Cape Crusaders. That was the animated TV show that D that the anime movie that DC did. He was in Big Bang Theory. Uh, he was in Robot Chicken. Uh, yeah, but most most of those are going to be appearances as Adam West. Like he would just basically play himself. He became a caricature. He was a, he was the voice in Grand Theft Auto Five. It, it's like William Shatner, right? He's been Jake in the Neverland Pirates for all you kids out there. Superhero Squad. Okay, yeah, I think we're done with that. Thirty Rock. I want to see if he was in Towering Inferno. Wasn't that like? That was like a while back. That was like way long ago. Yeah. Oh, he had a pretty years he had a pretty, ago. He, he had a pretty good career. Anyways, uh. Adam West died 88 years old. It's a good life. 88, right? 88? What? What's, what? Who's trolling you? Someone on the phone. Someone's trolling Susie. Shame. Shame. Call again and keep doing it. No. <laughs> we have better things to do here, guys, like yes. rocking our heads in toilet paper. Absolutely. So, Adam West, you know, um, and that's that's that right there. So, thank you, Adam West, for giving us your, we love you, Adam West. your wonderful thing. Um... What else is news? Black Panther trailer debuted. It did. During the NBA Finals. Um, what'd you think? Well, I thought it was fantastic. I'm super excited for it. How about you? I'm excited for it as well. I am. I really am. Uh, I, I think this is great to see. Uh, it, it, it's, it's literally a whole new world in the Marvel Universe that yes. we haven't seen before. Right. It's totally unrelated to anything we've seen. It's right. kind of like Ant-Man was in the Marvel Universe. It was its own thing, separate, still kind of connected. I mean, you got you got that guy, the Claw, who was in yeah. Age of Ultron, who, who mm. what's his name, the guy? He's fantastic. The guy that played Gollum. Yeah. No. What's his name? Hello, hello, hello. We, we are filming live here at Corker Comics Miami, so you want to come by and check us out, you're more than welcome to, and heckle us, like those people in the window shopping just did. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Hi. Adios. Oh no, nope, come, come come back anytime. Yes. Um, so the black the Black Panther trailer. Um, I don't know what the story is. It it didn't tell me anything. It, it felt even though it was like a minute long. It was a teaser. It was it, it, it was a little felt longer than a teaser, but it didn't give me any insight as to what the movie was going to be about. Wakanda reminded me a lot of Asgard. As far as like the CGI, I wasn't impressed by the look of Wakanda. I thought it. Looked, I liked it. 
I mean, I liked it, but it, it looked a little too fake. I didn't get that at all. I did. We're talking about superheroes. Uh, whatever. I just, I, I didn't, I, I think, I think the CGI. It's all fake. I mean, uh, shut up. Of course it is. But I think the best part of the trailer was when the flashlight goes up and Black Panther's just chilling in the tree. No, I like the end. I like the end. What, he, what happened at the end? When he, like, flips off the car and goes flipping in the air and lands on another car. Yeah, but that 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 just that just that just seemed like an extended scene from from Civil War when they were in the tunnel. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, I was, love Civil War. It was good. It was good, but it, it didn't it didn't blow my skirt up. I'm really excited. I also like the uh, the five seconds we see his bodyguards going ham. No, I mean I think the movie's going to be great. Um, I will say, let's talk about it. Marvel's totally catering to the urban audience here. Uh, Playing, debuting it on the NBA Finals, the soundtrack was very hip hoppy, but modern hip hop. Unlike where Luke Cage has that um, um, old school hip hop vibe to it, you know. Um, so they're 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 totally being groundbreaking in that sense. I mean, not since Blade have we really had a a a uh, African American character uh, leading the movie, or African in this sense, because uh, T'Challa is not even American, right? From Wakanda. No comment. All around. T'Challa. T'Challa. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it, it, I think I think it's going to be good. Uh, I think Black Panther looks good. His suit looks pretty similar to Civil War, right? It looks exactly like Civil War. Which is weird because they usually change it so they can sell more toys, but it doesn't seem the case here. Um, and yeah, I'm in I'm interested to see a plot. I want to see what the movie's about. Uh, is Michael B. Jordan the villain? I don't know. I know he's in it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. He's in it. I think Angela Bassett's in it. Um, uh, yeah. She's uh, in it. Uh, what, what's the girl that, that, that was in uh, 12 Years a Slave? The one that won the Oscar. Mm. She was also in... She was Maz in Force Awakens. She, really? Lupita, yeah. Ni Lupita Nyong'o. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Lupita Nyong'o? Nyong'o. Nyong'o. Lupita Nyong'o. I know it looks yeah. great, man. I'm actually more excited for Black Panther than I am for Thor. I agree. I think Thor looks like a cheap rip off of Guardians too. Which was a horrible movie, so I mean very colorful. Very colorful, filled with like uh pop hits of our time, classic rock hits, you know, so but whatever, I'll, we'll still watch Thor. Black Panther trailer though, cool. We'll see. Yeah, super Absolutely. excited. Let's talk about why we're really here though. We're here to talk about the Mummy, which is I don't know if you want to call it a reboot. But it's definitely a reimagination of the classic Universal Studios movie monster character starring Tom Cruise, who, even after this movie, I think we could say can do no wrong. Is that okay? This movie was bad. But still, can he do no wrong? No, he can't do no wrong. He tried. Okay. All right. So, let's first, I think, I think it's important, we, we need to understand the rich history of the Universal monsters. Like, what a great property. Yes, I you know, agree. Uh, Universal launched their Dark Universe, and they're trying to do what Marvel and DC is doing by connecting all their movies together. Uh, if you don't know, Universal has been doing movie monster movies since the early 30s to, to I think it was the early 60s. Everything from Frankenstein, Dracula, Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, Wolfman meets Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. I mean, you name it. Like it is, it's it's all there. It's all Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, it it is Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's all under their umbrella, and those are all amazing characters with rich stories and a potential to be fabulous standalone movies. And to connect them, even is is just you know, gets me off. You know, and that's hence the Dark Universe. That's where we are as far as the properties. Now, Tom Cruise does the mummy. Tom Cruise isn't even the mummy. The mummy is played by this girl. She was in a, she was in a couple movies. Oh, Secret Service. She was also in, what's, what's, what's the movie with the, with the, the British people? There's a lot with of Samuel movies. Jackson. The, that's what I just said. Secret. It's not Service. called Secret Service. It's yes, called it is. Her Majesty's Secret Service. Kingsman. No. Kingsman. Thank you. That's Her Majesty's Secret Kingsman. Service. She was the one with the. Secret she, was Service. The one, she was the one with the blade. The, the blade legs. legs. Yeah. She um, was the, the the girlfriend of uh, Russell Simmons. Yeah. Anyways, so what did you think about the movie one? I thought it was terrible. I went to sleep. Why did you think it was terrible? Tell us more than that. 
I thought the movie was too dark. I hated his buddy. Dark? What do you mean dark? Oh, uh, dark. Like the screen. It was dark. I couldn't see shit. Oh, like physically dark? Yeah, like I just couldn't see shit. Okay. Right? I did not like his sidekick. Uh, he was unnecessary. We're I thought... We're talking about, we're talking about the, the guy that was uh, his partner or whatever? Yeah, yeah, his partner. Yeah. That was unnecessary. Um, I thought the story was really disjointed. Um, can you can you can you indulge a little? Or we, we yeah, just, sure. Yeah. So, the way they forced that relationship between him and the blonde girl—I don't know what her name is—like mm-hmm. where he's supposed to be this grave robbing, artifact de- black market dealing, you know, cocksure guy, right? Yes. And uh, he has no emotional attachments to anything, right? Even yeah. to his friend, puts him in danger, uh, risking a court martial for him. And then he meets this woman for one night in a hotel to steal a map to where there's a treasure, right? And he falls in love with her. And, and she falls re- in love with him. And that relationship is completely forced. It doesn't make sense for his character. Yes. What else you guys say about the movie? I thought Dr. Jekyll, that the, the Dr. Jekyll uh, Hyde character was fucking just terrible, man. Really? I hated him. Um, his intentions are never really clear. You, you feel he's going one way, then he goes the other. It's, it's just, it's just, the movie did not make sense. The story was just bad. All right. I didn't think it was as bad as he wants to say. And, and I, I pulled up IMDB.com so we can give these actors their, their, uh, their right names. Up. Uh, Sophia Butella was, was the mummy. Uh, Almanet. Sophia, Almanet, yeah. Sophia Butella and the girl you're talking about. We'll call her the mummy. The, the blonde girl, Annabella, Annabelle Wallis, played Jenny, Jenny Halsey. Mm-hmm. Um, here's what I think. Uh, seriously, I, I, thought, I thought they tried way too hard to create funny moments. I, and, and that's with the side character, which was uh, uh, Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson played Chris Vale, which is uh, Tom Cruise's, you know... Sidekick. Sidekick, uh, who literally dies in the first 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah, but then he comes back. He comes back, but, but as a haunting figure to Tom Cruise. And it, that just, it was terrible. That, that was, that was, that was cracking jokes the whole time. Right, he's dead and cracking jokes. Yeah, right. dead cracking jokes, and almost like his like unofficial like conscience, you know, or, or, or devil on his shoulder. Right. Uh, or angel, however you want to look at it. Um, I, I, I thought there were some scares in it, though. I really like, I, you know, there, there were, it, it wasn't too scary, of course. It's rated PG-13, it's not rated R. Um, but it, it, uh... There were definitely definitely some scares. I, I thought when 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 the girl came alive out of the tomb and she was like crawling, she, she it also reminded me of the nurses in in um, Silent Hill. You know right, the, yeah. the way the way they were moving and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, the way that she sucked the life out of people and turned them into zombies that followed her, and it, it in turn rejuvenated her. I thought that was really cool as well. Um, let's talk about this organization um, that that. Uh, acts as kind of like a shield in the dark universe that, that talks about the, the monsters, the one headed by Russell Crowe. I, I think that's a huge fail. I think that the Russell Crowe character is terrible. Why do you and, think the Russell Crowe character In comparison, if you're going to make this universal monsters, I always felt like Van Helsing was just way better. But Van Helsing was out to kill them. Sure. I think... But it made, it made, we don't, we don't understand that, that there's no way to understand Dr. Jekyll's intentions. He switches it like eight times. I mean, he's obviously the Nick Fury of the Dark Universe, but he has a switch that turns on and off that turns him into Mr. Hyde, which we see briefly in the movie. I was asleep at that part. Were you really? Oh, was it? It was, a, it was a good part. Let's be real. I mean, Russell Crowe's a good actor, you know, has made some great movies. He played the character good. Um... I I I I, I want to see where they're going though. I'm not writing it off, you know. Um, there were some there was there's some definitely some plugs and fan service when they were in this 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 uh, lab or, or, or museum that they were in uh, where they had the mummy captured. They they uh, they showed Dracula's skull. They, they showed a hand from the creature from the Black Lagoon. They showed a bunch of other skulls that arguably were Frankenstein. Um, Frankenstein's skull was one of them, arguably a wolf man skull. So there, there's a, there's Frankenstein's a, monster. Yeah. Um, so, and another thing too, another, another interesting thing is the Brendan Fraser mummy movies are apparently part of this universe because there is a scene in the movie where the blonde girl um, actually hits someone over the head in that little 
lab or whatever, and she hits she hits him with the Book of Life, which was featured in the Brendan Fraser Mummy movie that re, 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 uh, revived Emotep or whatever his name was. So, which makes total sense because the Mummy movies, the Brendan Fraser ones, took place what in the twenties or thirties? Yes. So. To have that happen, the Book of Life still exists in present modern day. There was another mummy. Who's to say there only has to be one mummy in ancient Egypt that comes back and can summon? You know, we also saw the girl that played uh, the, the what uh, uh, Amenet. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the whole like the the dust face going through London, which was similar to the first mummy. So maybe it's a maybe it's connected. Well, see, I like somewhere. those mummy movies. I love those mummy movies. And because yeah. but those mummy movies knew what they were doing. They were they were like tongue in cheek. They were supposed to be funny and yes. they were an action adventure movie. Yeah. This movie had no idea what it was doing. No, the original It mummy. changed tone, Steve. Like yeah. 10 different times they try to be a horror movie, they try to be a campy movie. Yes. Right? They try to be an action thriller for whatever the fuck reason. Yes. Like and none of it worked. The the thing that made the thing that made the original Mummy, um, we're talking about the Brendan Fraser ones, great. Yeah. It was like, it was like an Indiana Jones movie. It was. It was action adventure. It had the comedic value like the Indiana Jones movies had, except it had a supernatural thing to which it had sensed the Indiana Jones movies do too, uh, except more biblical. Um, this movie did not have that archaeology and action adventure feel at all. I agree with you. I think they tried to be more like a horror movie, but. But they didn't fully commit to that. Well, because it's PG-13, first and, of all. But then that's a problem. Then don't go the horror route. Yeah. Because then what I'm watching is is the changes in tones are really like... So you have horror in one minute, and then he punches one of the zombies, and his hand goes through the skull, and then his yes. hand like gets stuck. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden they're trying to be funny. Yeah. And then they're trying to do something else, and it's just, it's just off-putting. It just feels weird. I mean, I think what really made this movie fail at the end of the day... Um, was I don't want to say the word fail. Go see the movie. Like form your own no. opinion. Like seriously, but but trust me. But the the romance between Tom Cruise and the blonde chick, so honest. So Basically, he had a one night stand with a chick, stole the map. The next day, meets up with her. Falls in love. And 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 in the space of a week, they fall in love with each other because she's like, "You're a good man. I know you're a good man." And he's like, "I am a good man." And hey, spoilers, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Cruise is the mummy. He ends up not. He's not the mummy, but he takes in the god of death's spirit. But he, he is the mummy. He is so the basically. Mummy. He's the mummy. The girl, it ends with him being the mummy. Yeah, it ends with him being the mummy. The girl mummy is dies, and she's she's to done. save the life of this woman, which is completely out of character for him. Totally out of character for him. And does he really give a shit about her? No, I don't think he does either. No. She was just some pussy. Because then what happens is at the end of the movie, he's like off on an adventure with his buddy again, with his like zombie buddy. I know. They need to get rid of that guy. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. And, uh... But I, I, I liked the female mummy. I thought she was great. She was good, but she wasn't... She wasn't even the villain. She was tied up half the time. Yeah, right. And Let me tell you something. I could never be a superhero. I would have straight, like, given in to her. I'd be like, kill me, bitch. She's so fine. <laughs> yeah. Movies with me would last ten minutes. Well, see, here's the thing. Tom Cruise is now the tortured soul. He's he's almost a Jekyll and Hyde in himself. You know, he has his human side that is is the hero, but then he has the he's also the god of death apparently now, and the mummy. And I guess at the end of the movie, Russell Crowe is is narrating and saying that you know, Tom Cruise could become their biggest ally to fight monsters with monsters. Yeah. Um. I want to see where they're going. They're committed. They're they're a soul. Universal is balls deep in the dark universe. They went like they went as far as to put the dark universe logo after the Universal logo. So like, here's the deal. Let's be real. We are nerds. We follow the shit like this. But I think it's safe to say that 60, if not 70 percent of the audience that went to go see the Mummy has no clue that they were going to see this this connected universe of monster movies. They really just thought they were going to see a Tom Cruise movie called The Mummy. But, that probably made it even worse for them. But now they're like, "What's this dark universe?" See, maybe you're as you're more forgiving because you're you're ready to look at it, and, and you know that it's a part of a whole, right? Yeah, I'm so seeing the bigger people, picture. Yeah, these people are going in for just a a, a mummy movie are probably going to be hugely disappointed. Probably because that Jekyll and Hyde character will be even worse for them than it was for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mind the Jekyll and Hyde character, actually. I know you, you couldn't stand it, but I, did, I didn't mind it. Um, I, I, I think... 
I don't know. I want to see where they're going next. Their choice of movies are weird. You know, like, they did Dracula Untold a couple years ago, which was supposed to launch their dark universe. That was awful. I didn't even see it, but I heard nothing but bad things about it. So Universal, it did so bad that Universal was like, that never happened. We're doing the Mummy, but I think they're they're committed now because they call the Dark yes. Universe. They why why did they just continue on with what Van Helsing was establishing? I thought that they were not great. Are you movies, talking about Hugh Jackman? Yeah, Van Helsing was enjoyable. That movie was right. fucking horrible. It was all right. The Van Helsing Hugh Jackman better, movie better than the Mummy? No, no, no. Suck my ass. No way. No, no, no way. That movie was horrible. Okay, it was bad. I thought it was entertaining. Okay, whatever. I mean, Hugh Jackman's entertainment, but that movie was fucking horrible. Anyway, so they're good. They're doing the Invisible Man now with Johnny Depp. All right, which we'll see. Yeah, Johnny okay. Depp is not gonna agree to be invisible. Uh, <laughs> he's doing what my friend told me. He's doing it for the scarves. They'll probably do like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen style with like the powder and stuff. Yeah, that was great. I love League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I liked it too. I don't know why people hated it. Why so did they? I don't know. I, it, it's almost like Dark Universe wants to be what League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yeah. was and could have been. Right. You know, like I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed League of Extraordinary I it was Gentlemen. Fantastic. I really did. Um, maybe I was younger. I was much younger at the time. I'm just stupid. But anyways. Um, Bride of Frankenstein they announced too. Be- before Frankenstein. Which they're making Bride of Frankenstein before they're making Frankenstein. But they announced Javier... What's his name? Bardem. Javier Bardem of, from No Country for Old Man. From yeah. from the Bond movie. Which, I forget which Bond movie that was that he was in. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Skyfall. Skyfall. So, I mean, that that's a good... They're picking good people to be in these roles. Yeah, you figure Tom Cruise, Johnny Depp, Javier Bardem, they're all in. Russell Crowe. I mean, Russell Crowe, yeah. The, the, these are all Academy Award potential, if not winners, you know, in the history of movie making. So they, they're definitely invested. They're definitely putting a lot. This Alex Kurtzman, who was the director, uh, will never direct again. I heard he's. I heard he. I heard he's like the Zack Snyder of. The Dark Universe, though. Well, he's doing his best impression of Zack Snyder by fucking everything up from the jump. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe so. I mean, we'll see. I mean, Universal, I'm I'm going to go see your next movie. I'll probably see all the movies, to be honest. I'm going to see all of them. I'm going to see all of them. And, and but I'm not going to like I'm interested. I have a soft spot for the movie Monster movies. I grew up watching a lot of them. Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney Sr., Lon Chaney Jr., the... the, the the, the founders of movie monster movies. I mean, yeah, it, you just... There's something nostalgic and great about it. it good, good for you, Universal, for trying to make it relevant again. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if they're going to revamp The Mummy Ride at Universal Studios for I mean, I hope they don't, because that's literally the best ride I've ever been on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. So, go see the movie. Be your judge for yourself. Tom Cruise stars... Along with uh, Sophia Boutella, Annabelle Wallace as the pointless blonde, and and the, and the psychic. I don't want to say his name. He was pointless. No offense. It was off. No offense. But uh, go go see the movie. It was a little scary at times. Save your money. If you do bring your kids, there are some scares. Um, but it's not that bad. You want to be really disappointed. Do you want to know why it's not that bad though? Is because Tom Cruise made it. And well, Tom Cruise doesn't make bad movies. I was movies throwing out such a bad of his, so this is really yeah. hard for me. But be, 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 before we talk about Tom Cruise, to I mean, easily I, I, this is I, his I, worst I, movie, I, by the way. I, I, I want to close out on the Mummy real quick, though, and say domestically this weekend they pulled in just over thirty-two million dollars, but they killed international. I heard. Yes. They did like a hundred and something. Well, Tom Cruise is a huge international star, yeah. though. So they already beat yeah, the budget. The budget was $125 million on the movie, which is kind of low for a big blockbuster movie nowadays, you know? So they've already exceeded the that's budget. Like, that's white people money. You know, um, and so they're, they're definitely going to make their money back. So, but it didn't beat out Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman still this weekend did 57, over $57 million, almost, almost double, almost double what the mummy took in. Um, so, kudos Warner Brothers and DC for holding it down. Uh, a, a successful DC movie means more DC movies, I think. So, you know, even though they haven't announced Wonder Woman 2. I heard an interesting theory about Wonder Woman being uh, done with World War One instead of World War Two. Like, why they wouldn't make her fight Nazis. Why is that? Because of all the, like, sensitivity going on around now. And then, do you think that her being Israeli had a, a, any part to uh, play with that? You're saying her, you're saying you're saying her not fight 
we're not fighting Nazis because the Nazis, of course, had the Holocaust, which right. was against the Jewish people. Right, right, right. And she's Israeli. Right. It could be. It could be. I don't want to get too political with it, but it, it's a definitely a good thing. There's nothing wrong with getting political. Who's going to say they like Nazis, dude? We can talk shit about Nazis. No one's being affected. No, I I, I agree. I agree. This this just isn't the, the show for that. I think I think they went for World War One because Captain America, the first Avenger, did World War Two, and they don't want to they, they don't want to be compared too much. I think at the end of the day, that's really the real reason why. I'm sure, I'd rather go with other conspiracy theories. Tom, right, okay. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. All right, so we're here to talk about Tom Cruise now we love and Tom literally Cruise. suck his dick because we love he us, sucks. I'm just watching. We love some. We love some Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise does not make bad movies. No. You can hate on The Mummy all you want, but it is not his worst movie. So, here's Whoa. what we're going to do. It's not. Here's it. We're going to we're going to name our we're going to name our we're going to go through a ton of Tom Cruise movies right now and and then we're going to come up with what in our opinion is uh, our individual Let's top. Do the top 5. We don't have to go top. through all of them. That's a lot of movies. Well, we, we we can go through the main ones just to remind the audience of what a, what a great actor Tom Cruise sure, really is. Not. Before we do that, though, before we get on Tom Cruise, uh, Susie, do we have any questions or comments from anybody in regard to Please. Mummy, Dark Universe, Adam West, Black Panther, whatever? Let me go to the beginning. Wow, it's that many, huh? Yes. A bunch of stuff. Please say who gave... Are there any links for job say, applications? Please say who gave the, the comment as well. I will. Ying Yang says he was also in Fairly Odd Parents as Catman. I think we're talking about Adam West. Yeah, Adam okay, West. Okay, thank you. Oh, Fairly Odd Parents was a great cartoon, by the way. Okay, cool. Welcome back. Um, let me see what else is here. And then I guess it's about the Black Panthers. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says I think the best part was when the bullets were reflecting off his armor, and this but was cursed vintage. Okay. Yeah, but we already saw that in Civil War, didn't we? I don't want to get back. I don't know. I, I think so. Oh, so the voting has concluded. Oh, really? Yes. Thank but you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. MiamiNewTimes.com. Hopefully, we won. Yes. And then this is about the mummy. It says if it, it wasn't fun like Brendan Fraser's once, or felt, or felt adventurous like Indiana Jones. It had no life. Exactly. Okay. No okay. life. Agree. Okay. Agree. Okay. Whoever said that comment, who gave, who gave you that comment? This was JL Comics. JL Comics. JL Comics. You should come watch the next movie with us because I need backup. <laughs> By the way, how about this? Why don't we announce the next movie we're going to go see? Anyone wants to go that time? They can meet up with us and have a little Poker Comics movie night. Yeah, we will be at the Regal West Fork, uh, Pepper Cinema Pines. in Pepper Pines, that is west of I-75 on Pines Boulevard. And the next movie we're going to see is Transformers. Oh, fuck. Really? Yeah. I'm with you. No, yeah. come on, man. No, we gotta I'm go. We gotta do it. It's not this week. It's the following week. We'll probably go see it on a Thursday. And we usually see the movies on Thursdays around 10 o'clock. Yeah, around 10, 10.30, 10 depending on the movie. I'll bother him to put up the time on, on Facebook, so if any of you want to come see it, you're more than yeah. welcome I to join us. I hope it'll be at 10 o'clock, because God knows the Michael Bay Transformer movies oh are Oh my God, they're like four fucking hours, hours too. Jesus I Christ, know. dude. What are we doing? We have to. We can't avoid it. Anyway. What comes out this week? Cars 3. That's it? I thought there was something coming out this week. I don't know. Probably something else. But Cars 3 is the big one. Which right. I love me some Pixar, which we could spend a Maybe, whole episode yeah, on. You know Pixar, what? We Maybe we'll see Cars 3. We'll let you all know. Next week it is Transformers. And the week after that, Baby Driver. Has nothing to do with comics. I don't give a fuck. Whatever. Anyways, you okay. gotta give this to me. If I'm gonna see Transformers, we're gonna see Baby Driver. Maybe. Okay, we'll see. Right. Anyways, all right. So listen, let, uh, Susie, is that it for the comments and questions? There's a weird comment that says, "Dad says I want to know China." Yeah, I like to know China's involvement in this whole thing. How does China play into this conversation? Because China is the real issue here in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about China. Who is that? Who is that? This was irreplaceable, Simi. I love that comment. I wait, wish wait, you need to comment wait, 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 all the time on everything. Can we not get too into this? Seriously, how far deep are we in the show right now, time wise? I have um, no idea. Don't stop us, Susan. Just leave it. Just leave it. You know what? The whole thing about China. We spent two hours talking about China. Let's, the let's, reason that there's no more paraphrase. comedies anymore is paraphrase. because of China. Paraphrase. Okay, there's no comedies anymore because of China. Because comedy does not translate as well uh, through languages. I'm not trying to be a racist, right? Okay, I'm not no, saying that Chinese no, people yeah. aren't funny. No, I understand. Yeah. Right? So because yeah. right now so much money is made back through China, right, we we'll always have to be, you're making everything as generic as possible, which is why movies like The Mummy get made. Tom Cruise is going to draw in China. 
uh, if they made it a little more Americanized, it wouldn't play. It wouldn't have made back its money. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna I, say fuck China. I think. I think. I think they wanted. To, I think they wanted us to get really political with China just now. Which we, we get some blue. We yeah. will. come to the store. Talk to Juan. Talk to off, me. Offset. I got some shit about China. Anyways, let's get on that Tom Cruise dick. Okay, we're here to talk about Tom Cruise and how great he is because he does not make bad movies. He makes movies good even when they are bad. Except the Mummy, sure. No, though you're gonna say the Mummy is his worst movie. Um, that I've seen. Fuck you, dude. Whatever. Anyways, all right. Listen, we're gonna go through a brief thing here. I'm gonna. Uh, he's been in tons of movies, but we're just gonna pull out the, the best ones, and then we're gonna talk about them. Taps. It was okay. The Outsiders. Eh, you know. Risky Business. Which was what propelled him to start him. That was the first big one, right? Amazing. Yeah. All the right moves. Oh sure. Legend. I love Legends. I think Legends is, is his worst. There's no way. Well, it's a cold classic. Anyways, Tim Curry's in there. Top Gun. What I wanted to yeah. <laughs> They're making a sequel. Can't fuck with Top Gun. The Color of Money. That was fantastic. Can't One of fuck my with that. Cocktail. Amazing. Rain Man. Amazing. Born on the 4th of July. Days of Thunder. Far and Away. That one was pretty good. A few good men. This is all in order. Far and away was with Nicole Kidman. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but he met her on on um the other one, the the Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Yes. Um, a few good men. Fantastic. Fantastic. People still quote that fucking movie. It's like yeah, 30 years they, old. they do. I know it's crazy. The Firm. Uh, that's also amazing. Okay. Interview with a Vampire. Great. Pretty good. Mission Impossible. Have I named bad shit yet? I don't think so. Jerry Maguire. Eyes wide shut, which is weird. It is weird, but yeah, you know. Magnolia, Mission Impossible Two, Vanilla Sky, Minority Report, The Last Samurai, Collateral. I think we for, I think a lot of people forget about Collateral. Yeah, Collateral with Jamie Foxx, yeah. the Hitman movie, when he's in the cab. Yeah, War of the Worlds. That was fantastic. Yes, I love War of the Worlds. Mission Impossible Three. Who's better than two? Was bad. Tropic Thunder, which he was the comedian. Fantastic, yeah. 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 Valkyrie, which even though he never had a German accent in the movie, was a pretty damn good movie. That was a good movie. Yeah. He should have, you know, but he should have gone to a speech guy. But he's Tom Cruise, so it's okay. Night and Day. That was with uh, something about Mary. Cameron Diaz? Yeah, that was with Cameron Diaz. That, that was a pretty bad one. It wasn't bad. That was bad. Well, comparatively speaking. Comparatively, yeah. Mission Impossible, Ghost yeah. Protocol. Right, which was, was great. Yeah. It was good. This was where he, he was supposed to pass the torch to the guy that plays Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, but it did so well the mission, that Tom Cruise was like, fuck it, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, and 5 was, was probably yeah. one of the best ones. Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, where he uh, where he played uh, Stacy Jack. Yeah, that's another one that was. Uh... Yeah, Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher was great. Edge of Tomorrow. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, The Mummy. And then this is what he's got coming up: Top Gun. Uh, yeah, the sequel. That's... And a Mission Impossible Six. Yeah. Well, the last two Mission Impossibles were really, really good. They really were good. So. Um... <laughs> I mean, there's a couple of indie little, little little parts and shorts I didn't name in there, but that's Tom, that, that's Tom Cruise's career, which is pretty fucking good. That's pretty amazing. So, like, what's your top five? Give me your five. Five being the worst. All right, five being the, the worst. Best. It's gonna be. There's gonna be a lot of disagreements because he's made a lot of movies. And a lot of great. There's ones. a lot of stuff that's not in here now. My top five is not based on his best movies, but what I feel most enjoyable movies to watch. Okay. Right, because. You could say The Godfather 2 is one of the best movies ever made, right? Okay. But most of the time, I'd rather watch Die Hard. Okay, yeah, I yeah. agree, so, I agree, I agree. Um, number five for me is The Color of Money. Great. 100%. Um, one of the reasons why is uh, Sentimental Value. I love The Hustler mm -hmm. with Newman. I thought it was fantastic. It's incredible that The Color of Money came, it took 25 years to make. And uh, I think it was Scorsese who directed it, and it was just awesome. It was a great send-off for the uh, Fast Eddie character. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tom Cruise played... He's, it, that's what he was at the time. He was really young, charming, good-looking. He played the part really convincingly, and it was fantastic. I'm going Edge of Tomorrow. Solo. Edge of Tomorrow is my number five. That's pretty fucking low, man. Edge of Tomorrow is my number five. Edge of Tomorrow is a super underrated movie altogether. 
All right? A huge disappointment for Tom Cruise and the box office. But for some reason, they're making a sequel, which I'm down for. Right. You know? But... Holy shit, Groundhog Day with exosuits and fucking aliens and fucking God, so war. Good. Like, so, good. so fucking good. Yeah. Really good movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go watch Edge of Tomorrow. I, you know, a lot of people said it should have been called Live, Di- Live Die Repeat, which which was what the advertisement was. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't say Edge of Tomorrow, it was just Live Die Repeat. And then, like, at the bottom, right. it's like Edge of Tomorrow. Right. Like, um, they, blamed, they, they blamed a bunch of reasons why it didn't do well. But it should have. I saw that movie in the theaters actually, and it was fucking great. Edge of Tomorrow is my number five. Number four. Number four is Magnolia. Great, so good. And um, the Which reason he's, he's not even really the star. He's like no, he's, he's like one of like six stars in that. But movie. what's fantastic is seeing him do something that I never see him. He played like a skeezy, like self help for guys. It's yeah. famous in that movie for his quotes, you know, respect the cock, yeah, master yeah. the cunt. Yes. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's just a great performance, and I think... Well, I could know, have done without him singing. Yeah, the singing part, that was weird. Yeah. But the whole movie, you know, it's They Wes were all singing. The whole cast was singing. It's, but Wes, it's Wes Anderson. It's yeah, which his movies are great. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that, good, good call. Uh, my number four is going to be... Oh, Jesus, what was it again? I'm sorry. I, got, I need to... Oh, yes. Uh, Vanilla Sky. Again, very low. Vanilla Sky is my number four. First of all, like... I am a sucker for alternate realities. I am a sucker for fucking what ifs. I am a sucker for time travel, anything like that. And Vanilla Sky is the ultimate alternate reality movie. Like, and and the, the trade off was amazing. And you know what? If you didn't see for, if you didn't see that movie, it's great. But when 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 he's walking with Penelope Cruz and the skies look all like right. marmalade skies, I remember watching. I saw it in the theater. Um, uh, and I, I, I was watching it and I was like, this looks too perfect. I remember saying that, but I didn't, I didn't really question it. I'm like, maybe it's just whatever. It's an artsy shot. And then when I found out at the end that it was a replica of a Bob Dylan cover and everything from the, from the, from the point of, of where he just lost himself. Outside the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Outside the bar. He went into, went, went, went into cryogenic hibernation. It's like total recall. It's totally like Total well, Recall. Well, yeah. Or like Demolition yeah, Man meets Total right, right. Recall. Yeah, something like that. You know? And holy shit. And and listen, him him being him 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 fucking Penelope Cruz and killing her to Todd Rudgren's Can We Still Be Friends? <laughs> like like sign me up, man. And Kurt Russell's actually in that movie. Is he? He plays a psychologist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a couple of people. Uh, Jason Lee's in it, too. Yeah, Jason Lee's in it, randomly. And and, and and that was, like, his first big movie, I think, post-Mallrats. Right, right. You know? He had that TV show, too. But, 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 um... Great movie. Number three, go. So, before I go into my top three, <clears throat> my favorite genres are westerns. Tom Cruise has not been any real westerns. And sci-fi. So my top three are all sci-fi. Okay. And so my number three would be Edge of Tomorrow. Okay. For all the reasons you said. Nothing to add to that. <laughs> Nothing to add to it. All right. I'm having a hard time with my number three. I really am. We could have done a top ten. We should have. <laughs> Shit. My number, my number three is the firm. That's ridiculous. The firm is amazing. First of all, it's written by John Not Grisham. Not better than Edge of Tomorrow. It is written by John Grisham, and I think it's. I think all his all of his books were made in the movies, right? Or most? A lot of them do. Oh my God! Yeah. What was that one with the? Uh... With Samuel L. Jackson. I don't know, but whatever. Anyways, John Grisham wrote the firm. The firm. What was the Samuel Jackson movie, guys? Yeah, he deserves to die, and I hope they burn in hell. That one. Oh, oh, the one with isn't that the one with Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, with Matthew McConaughey. It's not like, the, imagine they rape this little girl. Uh, and hung jury, runaway jury. White. Is it hung? No. The jury, something, something about I don't the jury. Know. We'll look it up later. Uh, or it's not. It, it's of course. I know what you're talking about, but yeah. Um, John Grisham, great writer, yeah. great book. You know, all about the courtroom, all about and. Tom Cruise is a fancy defense lawyer uh, whose firm just so happens to represent the mafia, and he, and you just see this character go through hell with 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 the feds, 
and he ends up putting everyone against each other, and he comes off on top. Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman's in, in that movie. Who does a great job? Great. Uh, the, the the guy that was in Cocoon, mm. the old man in Cocoon, is like the bad guy, the hitman in that right. movie. You know, you know, I get paid to do things that people don't want to know about. Yeah. You know, like 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 like. like, like Took place in New Orleans, I think. Uh huh. Or, or New Orleans, whatever how you say, New Orleans. Was it New Orleans? I think no, it wasn't. Oh, that it was, was like in Dallas. Or something. No, it took place in in uh, Massachusetts. No, Memphis, no, I think. I really? Uh, it was it was in the south somewhere yeah. with a firm ticker. Either way, Firm is a great yeah, movie. Edge of your seat, corruption, yeah. great like mafioso, but not mafioso. It it. it Gene Hackman, genius. Tom Cruise, genius. It's my number three. I'm sorry. It, it, and and you know what? The, the the whole like honky tonk fucking New Orleans piano soundtrack I was I was all for too I just really great movie really great movie. and I think his wife yeah, was the girl that was that was Michael Douglas's girlfriend in Basic mm -hmm. Instinct mm -hmm. well she got fucked hard in that movie mm -hmm. and he bent her over the couch wow. and just did her anyways um, <laughs> so hey listen when you're 13 and 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 and, and you see some bitch get thrown over the couch and fine you're you're into it anyways firm is my number three go number two. Vanilla Sky. Wow. Again, for every all the reasons you said, and and, and again, wow. it's because well, the thing wow. is, I really, really sci-fi is my second favorite genre, and I felt like Vanilla Sky was really, really smart sci-fi. Wow. I haven't drawn a single spot on all the two games. Number two. Number two. All right. My number two is. Uh... My turn. Yeah. Few Good Men. Oh, that's fucking ridiculous. Few Good Men. Jesus Christ. <laughs> a Few Good Men is great, and whatever. You, you can't handle the truth. Like, I, under <laughs> I understand, but like, you're going with a firm and a few good men? Yeah. You're okay. leaving out, you're probably interviewed with a vampire to make your list. Interview with a vampire is better than both those movies. I disagree. I disagree 100%. Oh, go ahead and continue being wrong. A Few Good Men is just, it's, it's a solid movie, start to finish, great cast again. You know, and and uh, maybe I'm just maybe I like those court yeah. docu those court dramas. I don't know. Maybe I'm into. I like my cousin Vinny. You know, I, I like Law and Order too. I don't know. A Few Good Men is a great movie. Tom Cruise is great. Jack Nicholson is great. Did Jack Nicholson get an Academy Award for that movie? I don't know. I, I Keith Sutherland is great. Even Demi Moore is great. And uh, and who was the guy that was the, the other guy? I, I only saw it once. It doesn't I don't remember. You only saw it once. It's not. I don't. Like those Directed by Rob Reiner, who made, great, makes great movies as well. A Few Good Men is solid. It really We're going to have the same number one. It's so ridiculous. What's your number one? No, my number one is his best movie, which is Minority Report, 100%. <sighs> That's not my number one. Shit, bro. Minority Report didn't make your fucking list? Didn't make my You're list. a nerd. Didn't make my list. What is your problem with Philip K. Dick? It didn't make my list. Like, you all. didn't like Blade Runner. Huh? Didn't make my list. And you don't like Minority Report? No. I mean, I like it. There are no bad Tom Cruise movies. Marvel just did a whole event based on Minority Report. Tell me why Minority Report is your number one. Minority Report is the best Tom Cruise movie because, first of all, I love sci-fi, so I love the concepts in it. You made that right? clear already. I like the politics behind that movie. Okay. Right. Um, and I think just it's Tom Cruise at his actiony best. I like Minority Report because Minority Report definitely, you know, gave us a glimpse into a very possible future. Right. Like a very scary possible future. First, mm -hmm. self-driving cars, retina scans everywhere. Pre-crime. Pre-crime. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, you know how they have like you know, gonna, even right, now there's pre cogs No, no, but Come I'm on. not saying that there's pre cogs but now like but but now they 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 um they do tests right to measure. There, there's indicators that would lead someone to commit a crime faster than someone else. Well, listen, we, we, I can't, doing studies on this. I can't right. hate on Minority Report. I mean, Spielberg directed. Spielberg doesn't make bad movies either. He's another let's one. Let's be real. He's, 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 he is the director equivalent of Tom Cruise, the actor. Yes. Um, and, so you put the both of them together, and, best movie. Well, no, my, my number one, and and I'm not going to lie, this this comes from more of a nostalgic value. It's, it's probably, risky business. It's probably not his best movie. It's a nostalgic thing for me, but it is risky business. Risky business is my favorite Fucking Tom Cruise movie. Did I, you imitate that movie? It could come on whenever. First of all, let's you talk. You did the underwear thing, didn't you? Let, no, I didn't. But let's talk about. Let's talk about what. what made, first of all, that underwear scene to old time rock and roll is iconic. We will yes. see that image 
in in movie collages of famous clips for the rest of our lives. For sure. For sure. Yes, yeah, for sure. All right. It, it, it's an iconic image. Rebecca De Mornay is beautiful. When she walks into the fucking house and the leaves fly everywhere, she drops her thumb and fucks in dirty. Like, I was all for that. The, the soundtrack by Tangerine Dream was fucking amazing. I fell in love with the Porsche 928 in that movie. Uh, the, the guy that played Booger in Revenge of the Nerds was great. You know, Guido the Killer Pimp, great. I mean, it's... It's got, it, it, it's a story of a young kid just looking to get his rocks off, and he gets, he gets in deeper than he thought, and as a young entrepreneur discovers the business of human fulfillment. So, Hollywood, if you're paying attention and you want to get to Steve, make sure it has a good soundtrack, and there's fucking involved. Uh, you know what? I was, I was, I, it was, it was just. Is that why you didn't like Minority Report? Because he didn't fuck one of the precogs. No, she would have known it would have. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with the fucking. I just, you know, it, like I said, it's more of a nostalgia thing for me. And and no lie, uh, "Love on a Real Train" by Tangerine Dream is probably one of my top five favorite songs. You know, uh, so it, as well as your brother. Your brother probably feels the same way about that song. You know, uh, which we're going. Uh, yes, he has a brother. <laughs> so. Three men in the top blue, right? yeah. Recap. Number five, I said was Edge of Tomorrow. Yes. Number four, I said, I said Vanilla Sky. I said was Vanilla Sky. Number three, I said was The Firm. Number two, A Few Good Men. Number one, Risky Business. That is an awful list. And you said uh, The Color of Money was my number five. My number four was Magnolia. Uh, three was Edge of Tomorrow. Two was Vanilla Sky. Number one was Minority Report. See, here's the thing. Let's do some honorable mentions. And see, this is going to drive me crazy. In my honorable mentions, I won't even put Minority Report. I won't put Color of Money. You just drive me nuts. And I won't put... What's the other one? What was your number four? Uh, Magnolia. Mag I won't put Magnolia either. None of those three will be in my... I, you know what I, you know what I struggled with? I wanted to put Top Gun in. Her, her sure. I, I really wanted to put Top Gun in, and I couldn't, and it pisses me off that I couldn't. I really wanted to put Jerry Maguire in. No. And it pisses me off that I couldn't put Jerry Maguire in. That's, you just, we're complete, two, how are we even friends? <laughs> like, I need a new job and a new friend. If anybody <laughs> wants to be my friend, please let me know. I am in need of one, apparently. Thank right. you, Susan. All right, so. Because Interview with a Vampire would be the correct honorable mention. That's your honorable mention. Interview with a Vampire was amazing. All right, well, one more. One more honorable mention. Yeah. One more honorable mention from him? Yeah. Well, you do it. You go. We'll talk, I have to think about this. I would have won if well, it wasn't that way. Harry Kane, we should have done, done like top twenty. I mean, like, then, we, then we would name all those movies. We just name. We should have just. Yeah. You know what I'm guilty of? I've never seen Last Samurai, and I heard it's amazing. Okay, Last Samurai. Oh, well, so Last Samurai and 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 uh, what was the other one? Maybe not Last Samurai because that was a whole you know white man saving everybody thing again. Then I'd get tired. Right, so your two honorable mentions. So yeah, so Interview with a Vampire would definitely be one of my honorable mentions, and uh, Mission Impossible 1. Shit, Mission Impossible was Not the best one. It was great. No, Mission, Impossible, no, Mission Impossible 1 was the best Mission Impossible. Really? You think it's better than 4 and 5? I think it's the best one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No, I would go with that because I think at that yeah. point, when Mission Impossible came up, I think I remember Tom Cruise being... Like the number one actor in the world, like, no, yeah. you wouldn't consider him now. But when he did Mission Impossible at the time, and and then that movie comes out, and uh, I was young at the time, and uh, like I never knew that a spy movie could be so fun. Great, it was right. great. It was really great. Mission Impossible, yeah. Mission Impossible was great. But my honorable mentions are Top Gun and and um, Jerry Maguire. It's very nostalgic. Can we? Since we are sucking Tom Cruise, Dick, what is his worst movie? Pick one. Mummy. Out of all his movies, Mummy. The Mummy. Because I can tell you, I fell asleep during The Mummy, so wow. I should probably rewatch it because I missed a good, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes of it. Wow. But the with mummy. that said, I will tell you why it's the worst one. Because Please. I will never watch it again. Really? Yep. I'd rather watch Night and Day, mm. which was pretty bad. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't like it. That's how much I hated The Mummy, guys. The Mummy? Yep. I mean, I go with Legend. Oh. <sighs> Done. See? You it's know, boring. Know, these, it's boring. Look, listen, let's be, let, listen, let's be clear about something, okay? You're faking it. Tim Curry as the devil is probably the best interpretation of the devil on the screen. Sure. Would you agree Wait. with that? I know it's really hokey, but Al Pacino, you know. Shut the fuck up. That was... <laughs> come on! What no, the fuck? No. Al Pacino as the devil is great! No, no. Tim Curry as the devil is evil, scary. Like I was scared. Al Pacino is slick. The devil's not. Steve. 
Tenacious D was pretty that good. That was the best devil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. All right, well, I'm going with Legend. You say you say The Mummy. I think Mission Impossible 2 was worse than The Mummy. Okay? Like, seriously. Like, really? You're going to put The Mummy below Mission Impossible 2? I will rewatch Mission Impossible 2. Like, they, they, they were on crotch rockets, and then they lunged at each other and hit each other midair and then fell down and kept fighting. You would die. Going 90 miles an hour at with the other Mummies person. don't actually exist. <laughs> yeah, but Mission Impossible is I understand they hit rockets and they mm. fell down to the ground and they would have actually died. Guess what? Whatever. Hot-ass women from Algiers don't come right. to life and want to kill me while they fuck me. Listen, if there's any hot-ass Algerian woman, I'm ready to die. Okay. I am. Whatever. If Listen. you want to kill me while fucking me, I'm down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Fuck off, right? Yeah, that's what I know a lot of people are going to hate me. They're like, Legend is fucking, you know, how do you work in a comic book store and you don't like Legend? Exactly. But Legend is just, it's, it's whatever. Yeah. Plus, by the way, guys, Tim Curry, if you can see him at a con, he's really struggling right now. He had a stroke. Did you know this? I did know this. And he is really, really fucked up. So any help that you Great guys could be for Tim Curry. Great actor. He's given us a ton of awesome roles right. and movies and he's like you know almost Patrick Stewart friendly to like the nerd community so. yeah he's really cool really really good guy um my guilty Tom Cruise pleasure like is Eyes Wide Shut no. I think that movie is kind of like eh, all but the, the piano bing we are not playing all the tracks you want to bing you know, look, look, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to make it a race issue, but of course that would be your guilty pleasure, because that's some crazy shit white people do. I'm not gonna walk around the house with a mask, be like, I will fuck you with a mask, like. Yeah. Nah, not good. Okay. Beer. I was gonna go. Yeah, there was a piano. I would say, I was. Uh, Susie, any comments? Any any questions from anyone before we close out? Hey, everyone agree with, with me. The, everybody saying that Legend was amazing. Thank you guys. Legend was amazing. Samurai was actually really good. Says it was. Randall. Yeah, but but Randall, Randall, like Tom Cruise goes to become a samurai to save all these Japanese people because Randall's it takes a white dude. List. Right, Randall. Apparently right, his Randall. List um, even Richards like that he quits. Who's Rick? What? What? what Batsy? <laughs> oh, yeah, Wait, he quits? Listen, you, listen, listen, listen. That your list just blows? Listen, here's the deal. Okay? Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, watching the show. I, I understand the majority of people that are watching the show probably are heavy nerds. I respect... And and which means you're going to like the stereotypical nerdy shit. Like I'm not, a, I'm not a nerd. Like legend. Like the... the but, like, but I'm not a nerd and my list makes sense to them. That's because you picked the nerdy fucking movies. I know, I picked the good movies. Dude, listen, all, oh. the, all the sci-fi shit caters to the nerd community. I pick, I, pick, I pick movies that cater to fucking housewives and fucking, you know, married <laughs> ma married To like middle-aged, like upper-middle-class white people. Oh, well, whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, dude, if you could man in the firm. If, listen, anybody that wants to argue to say those movies are shit, please come in the store and tell me why they're bad movies. They're not shit. They're just not as exciting and as good as um as Magnolia? No, I like Magnolia's my, better know, than those movies. I'll tell you why Magnolia's better because Tom Cruise looks at you and says, "Respect the cock." Dude, it master does, the cunt. That okay. is a great line. Yeah, which takes place for 5 minutes. Yeah, that's all. The it, whole movie is all, not about that. No, I know it's not about that, but that's It's a 3-hour it, movie about multiple that, people. That's all it took for me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make it better than a few good men and the firm. Those, are, those movies are so derivative. Like, if you want a good court movie, My Cousin Vinny. No! My Cousin Vinny is fantastic. No, a Few Good Men is way fucking better than My Cousin Vinny. A Few Good Men is not... Next person. You, Anders. Is which is better a courtroom movie? A Few Good Men or My Cousin Vinny? I haven't seen either of those movies. Great. At least he's honest. Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right. How old are you, my friend? 23. 23. Of course he hasn't seen those movies. Yeah, I forgot. Jesus Christ, Juan. Yeah, My Cousin Vinny, you should all watch it, which is better. I think I think you're wrong. I, think, I, I don't think you're wrong because this is opinion. It's just Liz, but I'm saying okay. Here we go. This guy loves movies. Evan, what's, what's a better courtroom movie? A Few Good Men or My Cousin Vinny? Oh my God, that's a hard choice. Oh my God. Thank guy. you. I I prefer A Few Good Men. No. Thank you. As a movie, as so a movie. wrong. These youths oh don't know what the God. fuck they're saying. Oh my Watch. God. My Cousin Vinny is probably the better movie, and I enjoy it more. 
but as like a movie in terms of how it was made and how it's acted and everything, a few good men takes it. You can't handle the truth. Right. And trust me, I've seen both over 20 And he's only years. saying that because he's a youth. You can't handle the truth, Juan. Youth. You can't handle the truth. In terms of, in Marissa terms of the Tomei? Case, so he's destroying Like, right Marissa Tomei? Oh. Like, yeah, her cl- like, her clock was... T- I would have broken that clock. I would have ripped that clock to fucking shreds. Listen. <laughs> I'd be in jail. All right, whatever. <laughs> and, Susie, any other comments? Richard says the upcoming, the upcoming Tom Cruise movie, movie Batsy and the Dingleberries. Oh, and there's... And there's come here. I don't. We, we, I don't want to hear Rich's comments. Anyone else? And um, Randall says, "A few good men is basically just you can't handle the truth." That yeah, that, yeah, that's what it is. No way, code yeah. red. Plus, listen, I don't. We don't need white people defending Cuba. Thank you very much, Jack fucking Nicholson. And T Max says, "If entertainment is the case, Days of Thunder is the best. <laughs> if artistic, Days it Thunder would be the firm." Artistic, the firm. Over le- over interview with a vampire? I you're, I disagree. You know what? I, I, I could say that the play the thunder. Let me let me be fair. Let me who who said that comment? This was Team Mac twenty six. Team Mac twenty six. Listen, I thank you for giving kudos to the firm. I don't Jeez. think it's the best artistic movie. I got to say that I don't think it's artistic. It's interview with a vampire but, or Magnolia, but, which but, he was nominated but, for. But but but, but the firm is great. Thank yeah. you for giving those. Days of Thunder is great. I wish I could have said Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder was really entertaining, but not as entertaining as Minority Report. There's no way or Edge of Tomorrow. I mean, which is why it's not in either. Yeah, no, exactly. And anything else? Um, was he nominated? Much, Randall says there isn't much more to a few good men. Just a quote. That's bullshit. You need to rewatch fucking Few Good Men. No, Randall, you're absolutely right. Yeah. That's it. Whatever. Well, thank All you. Right. Yeah, thank you. So we hope you enjoyed us sucking Tom Cruise's dick. Basically, even though we just spent the last 20 minutes arguing about Tom Cruise movies, I think it's fair to say that they're all really good. And that's why we're arguing so much. Yeah. Because there really isn't a bad Tom Cruise movie. Even The Mummy, as flawed as it is, is not as bad as so many other pieces of shit. And by me saying that it's his worst movie, I do believe that. But Tom Cruise's worst is better than a lot of people's best now. Agreed. And Tom Cruise is actually... Get, if, I don't know if you agree with this. I feel like he's getting better with age. He's like doing the like reverse uh, uh, Robert De Niro. We'll see. Well, let's see where he is ten years from now. You know, I think I think he I think he needs to take a Bill Murray approach where he starts to embrace his look and stop dyeing his Murray's hair. So good. You know, and and just say I'm getting old and this is and and now now I'm gonna do new roles that aren't what I used to do because I'm not I'm not this young guy that that's as active anymore. I think Tom Cruise is trying to like hold on to that action star thing, sure. which is fine. He's 54 yeah, right now. Mm-hmm. Years of it. He's, yeah. got a, he's got a few more years, but not But it worked with Mission you know? Impossible 5. You know, it he's, was still great. He's not Stallone, you know? Stallone looks great for his age. He yeah. really does. I'm sure he's had some work done, but still... The Rock is also getting up there in age, too. The Rock is... Well, he's nowhere near Tom Cruise, no, but either way... Uh, basically, we're, we're, we're not here to hate on any of the Tom Cruise movies. Go Love see Tom the, Cruise. Even go see The Mummy, you know? Because support this dark universe, not because... You like the mummy because you want to see what Universal is going to do next. I can get behind that. You know, if 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 Dark Universe. Well, we know what they're going to do. Johnny does the Invisible Man. Fucking stupid. Either way, either way. If we don't if we don't get the box office dollars in there, we're not going to see these movies happen. You know, and that goes for everything. At Marvel, at DC, at at Disney, at at uh, Universal. Go see these movies so we can get more of them and we can keep talking shit or suck their dicks, whatever way we want to go. Tom Cruise is great. See all of his movies because everything on Juan's top five, everything on my top five, say what you will about them, at the end of the day, they're all phenomenal movies. They're all phenomenal fucking movies. Um, Go see The Mummy, R.I.P. Adam West, Black Panther coming in February, I think it is, of 2018. That that's the next big movie after Thor, so we're looking forward to that. I'm sure we'll see a really good preview in front of Thor when that movie comes out in October, or November, whatever it is. And uh, on that, um, please keep paying attention to our Facebook. We will be posting the next movie that we are going to go see. Maybe if there's one this week, we'll let you all know. You're more than welcome to join us at the movie or here at the store when we're doing this. Absolutely. And one more thing too, real quick. I was going to say this earlier, and I totally forgot. We are a comic book store. We're located in Miami on 107th and 8th Street. We also have a store in Pembroke Pines, uh, just east of University Drive on Pines Boulevard, across from Perry Airport. We're called Forka Comics, uh, and we don't really talk about comic books a lot. We're gonna. We're going to try to get better about that. We talk a lot about a lot of movies, but 
Just, the comic world is sort of in a lull right now. There's it, nothing it, really it, exciting going on. It is, but Darth Vader number one came out, second volume. Oh, guys, um, it's we still we still have copies yeah, of Darth Vader. If you guys didn't pick it up, I'm not really um, I'm not as big of a fan of Star Wars as as some people, but um, that Darth Vader issue is fantastic. You fantastic. actually um, they add to canon the reason why the lightsabers are red. Not only do they talk about why the lightsabers are red, but it takes place immediately following Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Which yes, is that's 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 what that's right. what I like about it. It's like, okay, Padme just died, Darth right. Vader is new in his suit, adjusting to his new right. role with the Empire uh, by by Emperor Palpatine mm -hmm. and and it's it, they're, they're only one issue in. We have them in yeah. stock still. Yeah. They're really great. If you give a fuck about Vader yeah, or Star Wars... Yeah, you guys should read it. It's fantastic. It, really it ties good. into the movies. It's really organic. It's natural. Uh, the feel going from movie to comic. So you definitely should check out Darth, Darth Vader number one. Absolutely. And uh, other than that, I'm Stephen Corka. One Crotch. Thank you.